You could very well be forgiven for having missed the announcement about Alpha Code 2 because it was buried under all the noise of Google Gemini AI and the subsequent controversy about whether it was quite as good as the sales pitch. Today, I'm delighted to introduce Alpha Code 2, a new and enhanced system with massively improved performance powered by Gemini. AlphaCode 2 is a coding AI that in competitive programming solved 1.7 times more problems than AlphaCode and performed better than a whopping 85% of competition participants. Gemini is great at coding, but we've been able to take it even further, creating a specialized version that performs remarkably well at competitive programming. So AlphaCode is not itself new. Two years ago, we presented AlphaCode, and it was the first AI system that could compete roughly at the level of the average human competitor. It was first introduced in 2022 and described at the time as producing computer programs at a rate comparable to the average programmer. But this was in competitive programming, so not really comparable to the life of the average programmer, but more on that later. Now, before we get into some of the details, let's look at how AlphaCode 2 was evaluated. It was evaluated using Code Forces contests, using the harder contest, a total of 77 contests in particular, but for each contest, it generated a million solutions. It was allowed to submit 10 solutions with the best one selected from each of the groups. I'll talk more about the groups a little bit later. And this is not quite how humans are evaluated, so it's a little bit difficult to get a direct comparison. Now, why do we care about competitive programming? Well, it is one of the ultimate litmus tests of algorithmic coding abilities. So you have thousands of talented programmers from all over the world that come together to compete and try to solve incredibly complex problems that require not only coding, but also math and reasoning. So how good is AlphaCode 2? When evaluated on the same platform as the original AlphaCode, it was found that AlphaCode 2 solved 1.7 times more problems and performed better than 85% of competition participants. As I mentioned, it was evaluated on the Code Forces platform, a mainstay of competitive programming. AlphaCode 2 solves 43% of the problems within 10 attempts, close to twice as many problems as the original AlphaCode, which was at 25%, while its predecessor, AlphaCode, performed at the level of a median competitor. When we evaluate AlphaCode 2 on the same platform as the original AlphaCode, we solve almost twice as many problems. While AlphaCode broke through the top half of human competitors, on average, we estimate that AlphaCode 2 performs better than 85% of competition participants. It's estimated that AlphaCode 2 reaches the 85th percentile on average. So how does it work and how is it powered? Well, first of all, you've got the fine tuning step. It uses several Gemini Pro based models. I've talked about Gemini Pro in other videos. It relies on these LLM models. It was trained on a data set containing around 15,000 problems taken from Code Forces, a competitive programming site, and 30 million samples of code written by humans. There are two consecutive rounds of fine tuning that you can see here. First of all, you take the contest data with the problems and the solutions. You get intermediate alpha code two models. Then you have higher quality data sets and it's difficult to find information on exactly what these higher quality data sets look like. And you end up with the alpha two code models and also a scoring model, which is used for ranking. Now, in terms of usage, it uses advanced search and re-ranking approaches tailored for competitive programming. So when presented with a problem, it works by generating about a million potential solutions, which is referred to as massive sampling here. Then it goes into the execution and filtration steps. We'll talk about those in a second. The results produced are in C++. Not entirely sure why C++ was chosen, maybe because of the sheer amount of complex code written in it. So it provides a good data set for competitive programming. You have the execution and filtration steps. Now they run tests to check the solution, again, filtering out any Thing that doesn't produce the desired result. With 95% of the results filtered out, the remaining 50,000 solutions are grouped based on similarity. The biggest groups are then ranked by yet another Gemini Pro model trained specifically for this task. And you have ranking and re-ranking which goes on within those subgroups. From the samples in each remaining ranked group, the very best is chosen in each group and submitted as a solution. So this is very much a throwing resource at the problem type of approach. Rather than throwing any real new intelligence at the problem, it's more like a workflow of specifically trained models for their particular task in the flow. And it's important to remember that this workflow and these models are targeted towards competitive programming. AlphaCode 2 makes use of dynamic program. Dynamic programming is an advanced algorithmic technique which basically simplifies a complicated problem by breaking it down into easier subproblems again and again. And what's really impressive 
is that not only AlphaCode 2 knows how to properly implement the strategy, but also when and where to use it. What the example shows us is that competitive programming is not just about implementation. It's also about understanding, maths, computer science, and indeed coding. And that makes it an extremely hard reasoning task. Not necessarily typical of the kind of work that the average software engineer is doing. Now, as I mentioned, while this is super interesting and quite impressive, the real world day-to-day -day work of software developers involves a lot of petty, mind-numbing tasks that are not particularly taxing. You're doing something that's been done a thousand times before and doesn't require complex algorithmic knowledge. You're often working with legacy code bases, working around the skill level of the colleagues on your project so they can support the code you've written. Sometimes you might be dealing with a performance problem, sometimes a greenfield project, sometimes just making general improvements, or you might even be changing some text that's presented to a user when they're checking out during a shopping experience. When some tasks are complex, you still more than likely won't be referring to the type of algorithms and code produced during coding contests. Most average developers will only use those types of skills when themselves participating in coding contests, performing code tasks on code ranking sites and during interviews. So again, the export of this type of AI model into the real world of software development is limited in my opinion. So in order to try it, can you get your hands on Alpha Code 2? Well, no, you can't. They are working on taking Alpha Code 2 specializations and bringing them to Gemini Pro models rather than the other way around as it is currently. Alpha Code 2 was built for competitive programming, but we're already working on bringing some of its unique capabilities right into the general Gemini models as a first step towards making this new programming paradigm available for everyone. And Gemini Pro is available for people to use. If you want to know how, I talk about that in my other videos. So I highly recommend checking that out. So what are the main issues with Alpha Code 2 with regards to programming? Well, firstly, it's too costly to run. Secondly, it's targeted to coding contests, not the real world. And thirdly, it would likely be a lot better if it was using Gemini Ultra rather than Gemini Pro. But again, that would incur even higher costs. So where does Alpha Code 2 go from here? Well, the obvious improvement, as I mentioned, is to use Ultra, Gemini Ultra, rather than Gemini Pro. But having said that, it points to some of the current limitations of these models in that rather than one super multimodal AI, which would be more impressive and more scary, they're training multiple AIs with specialist tasks in a workflow or pipeline for the production of competition code, knowing that much of the code produced will be junk and they need AIs to filter it out to get anything useful at the end. So this was a quick intro to Alpha Code 2. I see it as more of an academic exercise to improve programming capabilities in general rather than an immediate threat to your job. It's not something available for you to use and is incredibly expensive to run. In my opinion, developers might take a bit of heart from this current state of affairs, but not too much, since it's not so much about where we are now, but the trajectory of where this is headed. And however it's achieved, the scores at the end are impressive compared to the original alpha code, which was only as recent as 2022. According to this article in the register, Google have claimed that alpha code 2 is more than 10,000 times more sample efficient than alpha code. The current state of affairs to me highlights the fact that for programming, humans are still very much in the loop and in the driving seat. Another thing that is great about alpha code is that it performs even better when it collaborates with human coders who can provide grounding. Basically, developers can specify properties that the code samples have to obey. And when we do that, we see performance increase significantly. But we think of this uh, this kind of interaction between uh, programmers and AIs as the future of programming, where coders will not just give instructions, but actually collaborate with highly capable AI models that can reason about their problems, that can propose code designs, and that can even help with the actual implementation. I still see these AI tools as really assistance to humans, glorified code completion or script writing, very good at particular tasks, but not the entire job itself. There's an interesting post on Reddit where one of the users mentions that this looks pretty insane for the lazy who don't want to read the report, but want a small summary. This user mentions, okay, how many years do we get 100% at this point? Literally went from naught before 2017 to 85% in 2023. This is insane. How about in five years, we created an AI that can almost code better than any humans. So I highly recommend checking out this Reddit post. I'll link to this Reddit post in the description below and some of the comments are really quite interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below and if you don't want to be the last to know about important AI tech and programming news, then be sure to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.